Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we're ready to take some more notes today, so you will want to have your notebook out. Um, today we're going to be looking at clue 6 of our play tectonics unit called Fieldwork in Nepal. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up to your next available page and create a clue 6 vocabulary. Go ahead and add these words and definitions from clue 6 to your vocab page. Pause the video so that you can do that now. So before we get into clue 6, I wanted to review a couple of important things. So far in this unit, we've talked about three different types of convergent boundaries. So a convergent boundary, just to remember, is a, where two plates are coming together, coming towards each other. So there are oceanic-oceanic convergent boundaries, and that's when you see two oceanic crusts converging. The older one ends up subducting underneath the younger one. And when this happens, we see trenches being formed, and we also see island arcs being formed. Examples would be Japan, the Aleutian Islands, the Philippines, Indonesia, and the Caribbean would be another one. Uh, the other type of convergent boundary you'll see is oceanic continental, and that's when oceanic crust, which is denser, comes towards continental crust, and it is the one to subduct. And when this happens, we'll see trenches forming as well, but we'll also see volcanic mountains along the coast, continental volcanoes. And our example of this was the Andes mountain range along South America. The Nazca oceanic crust subducts underneath that to create volcanic mountains on the coast. Uh, and then finally, and this is the one we're going to look at closer today, is continental continental uplift. There's no subduction here. When two continental crusts converge, they're not dense enough for either of them to sink. So they're less dense than the mantle, the material in the mantle. So neither of them can get pushed under. They end up uplifting instead. And our example of that would be the Himalayans that we've talked about. And again, we get no volcanoes because there's no subduction in that area. So some of the questions we hope to answer as we go through this clue are, where is Nepal, first of all, and why is it so mountainous? What plates are involved in creating the mountains of Nepal? And what created the Himalayas, and how do they differ from other mountain ranges, let's say like the Appalachians? So we're going to take a look at that. So just as a kind of reminder, continental plus continental, created the Himalayans, right? Convergent boundary, two continental crusts. Nepal is a country that kind of sits in between India and China, and much of the Himalayan mountain range falls within this country. All right, so again on the map, this is Nepal, China, and India on either side. This would be an, a satellite view. So let's take a look at the formation of the Himalayans in an animation. All right, so this would have been when Pangaea still existed, and as you can see, India breaking off from Africa, and it's very quickly moving towards Eurasia. And as you can see, until it hits, it's actually oceanic crust that's subducting underneath Eurasia until India finally reaches and we get continental, continental, the Himalayas are born. And this is what they look like current day. Some of the tallest mountain ranges on Earth above sea level. All right. So the Himalayan mountain range, just as some background, 10 tallest mountains on Earth above sea level. Uh, it's a range that's 2,900 kilometers long. Mount Everest is the most widely known and highest above sea level mountain. So when we look at these mountain ranges, what do you notice about these mountains? What do they look like? Are they rounded? Are they jagged? Do you think they've been exposed to much weathering and erosion? How old do you think they are? Do you think they're relatively young or relatively old compared to other mountain ranges? So to kind of help us answer that, it's, a, it's helpful to take a look at another mountain range. This is the Appalachian Mountains, 
along the east coast of the United States. All right, so you can see in comparison, the Himalayas are very jagged, while these mountain ranges in the Appalachians are much more rounded. Himalayans are very jagged looking. And this is because they haven't had as much time to weather and erode. It's a relatively young mountain range, so it began forming about 50 to 70 million years ago. This would have been after the extinction of the dinosaurs, so these mountain ranges are actually younger than dinosaurs. All right, compared to the Appalachian Mountains, which have been around for almost 500 million years, and as you can see, they've had plenty of time to weather and to erode. They look much more rounded. All right, so you can see about 71 million years ago, India was just a landmass floating out in the middle of the ocean. 55 million years ago, 38, 10, and then finally, only really relatively recently in Earth's history did it crash into Eurasia, and that's why the Himalayans are so young. All right, time for some notes. Go ahead in your notebook. You're going to want to create a page. You can do C plus C, convergent boundary, a little bit of review. This is when two continental plates come together. Both have densities lower, which makes them more buoyant, than the mantle, which prevents them from subducting. We also kind of want a reminder, we haven't looked at this in a little while, but this is some past vocab. The stress that's created here would be compression stress. And this is intense compression caused by folding and faulting when two plates are being pressed together. We also call this a reverse fault. And we'll see mountains and earthquakes being formed here. Our example, again, is the Himalayan mountains. So go ahead, pause the video, make sure you get these notes into your notebook. All right, so again, we said that this causes folding, and compression stress will often either fold or break rock. All right, so you can see these are actually folded mountain ranges. Right. Folded mountains actually formed by crust, which has been uplifted. Right, This is a process of uplift. And folded, which means just buckled or bent by compression force. Right, So compression force that's applied over thousands or millions of years will start to fold the rock. All right, So there's really three main factors that will predict whether the rock will fold, bend, or whether it will break and fault because those are really the two possibilities when you're applying compression to a rock. All right, so we do want to write these down in our notebook as well. All right, the first factor is type of rock. The second is temperature. And the third is pressure, so how quickly the pressure might be applied. All right, and you want to create this little table in your notebook. This is a useful table. So if a rock is going to break, it's more likely that that rock was made up of brittle or easily broken material. It's more likely that it was cooler, so rock that's found in cooler climates is more likely to break when compression is applied. It's more likely that the pressure was applied very fast or very quickly. So if you apply pressure quickly to something, it's more likely to break. Right. On the other end of the spectrum, the rock is more likely to fold upward if it's a little bit more flexible soft, ductile, so it's going to bend a little bit easier. If it's in a warmer climate, that warmer rock is more flexible, more bendy. And also if that pressure is applied very slowly over time, you're more likely to get bending than breaking. Pause the video if you need to finish putting this in your notebook. All right, so when a mountain is folded, when a rock is compressed and folded, you end up with something called a syncline and an anticline. The syncline is the downward fold, the anticline is that upward fold. And those are two vocab words. If you haven't already, you do want to draw this little diagram into your notebook and label syncline and anticline so that you can see the difference between the two. Go ahead and pause and do that now if you need to. All right, so. We've finished our clue six, 
some of the information we wanted to get down. So hopefully we should be able to answer these questions now. Right? Where is Nepal? It's between India and China. We know that it's mountainous because it's a continental, continental convergent boundary. We know that the plates involved are the Australian Indian and the Eurasian plate. Right? And we also know that the Himalayas differ from other mountain ranges because of how young they are. It's a very young mountain range. It hasn't had a lot of time to weather and erode, so they tend to be very jagged high peaks. All right, this has been great, guys. I will see you tomorrow.